Hello, my name is T. R. Welling. Over the next 20 minutes, you'll see a variety of clips from documentaries that I'm working on regarding how the Khufu Pyramid was built. To understand how it was built, you have to understand where it was built, who it was built by, when it was built, why it was built, and what purpose it served since it was not a grave. The Khufu Pyramid is a very interesting building. It was the biggest building when it was built at 26, 2700 BC, not only was it the biggest building for 3,500 years, but because the building itself has a history that is mostly mythology with a little bit of truth here and there. The mythology of the, of the Khufu Pyramid is that it was built for Pharaoh Khufu, and Pharaoh is of course a, the name of the title of king for the, for the Egyptians, the polytheistic Egyptians. The problem is, is that those are not accurate. That's mythology. That the building was built to house the body of the king until the point where his body, the mummy, would be resurrected and he would journey to heaven or continue in, on earth as a, as a resurrected pharaoh. The problem is, is that all of this is mythology. But the accurate parts that are real are attributed to the wrong culture. The Khufu Pyramid as so aptly described in the fictional account of Stargate, is a place that has no writings and no ceremonial accoutrements, paintings, writing, furniture, canopic jars, you name it, the everything found inside of a mastaba minus rooms and hallways does not exist in the Khufu Pyramid or most of the other pyramids. The evidence that is found in the Khufu Pyramid that and other, some of the other pyramids that do match similarities to other pyramids and the mastabas was mostly put there after the exodus. Kingdoms were not exactly happy with the exodus and they wanted to do their best to remove all the signs of both Isiu's line, which would be the, the first Hyksos kings, the second millennia BC, up to the 1600s when the Hyksos were replaced by Jacob's line, who were then re replaced when King Tut, King Tutankhamun, who was a Jacob line descendant, died, and the two members of his council, who took over as, as Pharaoh after he died, were not on the throne for very long. The next kingdom that took over was the classic Egyptian kingdom that we are familiar with. Why? Because when the Romans conquered them, well, first. Alexander conquered them and then replaced the Egyptian, the current Egyptians with his own general, which would be Ptolemy. When Ptolemy took over, Ptolemy adopted the same organizational the governmental structure that, and the religious structure that the, the kingdom that took over for Tut had. When the Romans conquered them, the Romans and the, their Greek predecessors wrote information regarding what Egypt was like and Greek Egyptian polytheism was like based on the religion that took over after Tut and that was conquered by first Alexander and then adopted by Ptolemy and then conquered by the Romans and then replaced at least over time, several hundred years it took to replace Egyptian polytheism with Roman polytheism that whole interaction is where we get modern understanding of Egyptology, the religion of Egypt, the polytheistic concepts of Egypt, and the concept of hieroglyphic all comes from when the Greeks and the Romans conquered Egypt, when Alexander did it, and when Caesar did it. Now, the conquest that occurred, that's where standard classic Egyptology, both governmental structure and religious structure, were established and written into the history books, but from the kingdom that took over after Tut back, most of that information was either erased, edited badly, transcribed badly, or is complete fallacy. The Khufu Pyramid 
few of the cultures that conquered Egypt wanted to admit, acknowledge, or have the application of what the Khufu Pyramid actually was. Back to the mythology of the movie and the long-standing TV show, Stargate SG-1, is that it was a landing platform for alien ships. Now, it was a landing platform is accurate in a religious standpoint. Alien ships, from the word alien on, it's mostly inaccurate. But from the point of view where it's the Khufu Pyramid has very little to do with mastabas, other than hallways and rooms, and a place to put a vertical storage device, or the entrance is on the top, and or the bottom, depending on how you look at it, the Khufu Pyramid, Khafre Pyramid and the Menkau Pyramid and several of the other pyramids that have been found and their internal structures mapped out, for instance, the Bent Pyramid, which is also inaccurate as to what it was built for, why it was built for, and the damage within and without all that is mythology. It's not true. That was that building was attacked and sieged for a while. The damage inside the, the walls is horizontal impact damage, not vertical gravity-fed crush damage. The walls will be buckled, not side impact. Even a rainstorm with several tons of water, a one-inch, two-inch rainstorm over that much surface will produce, will, will, will add together to several tons of weight. Why don't the walls continue cra uh, cracking and crashing and the whole place fall apart if that is true? Well, that is not true. The Bent Pyramid was not. All the mythology surrounding the Bent Pyramid is completely inaccurate. The reality of the situation is, is that the pyramids were temples, not graves. The Bent Pyramid is a temple for both men and women to enter. Women's entrance was on the west, and the men's entrance was on the north, and they would come and go from the, from the middle to have various ceremonies and also be very, very protected inside. If they needed to, they can drop several hundred ton or hundred ton blocks, and the invaders could not get past them. And they could want one that there was various passages that they can wander around inside the Bat Pyramid and be just fine for a bit of time. The Khufu Pyramid was in fact actually dedicated to, to Pharaoh Khufu. Pharaoh Khufu is the hieroglyphic name for Noah. Yes, you heard me correctly. Noah. As in Noah, the no Noah's Ark, the Animals 2x2, two two, which happens to, Animals 2x2 two two happens to be both part of the Narmer monolith in Upper Egypt and took a starring role in what would be called taxes, the, the taxes of, of Heron, which is um, Osiris, or in the older version, pre Hexos invasion, the older version would be Anubis. Anubis' is son Horus, his son carried on the tradition of the two by two and would take two by two animals from farms as taxes. The basic origin of taxes could be explained from Noah's Ark and the Egyptian taxes, two by two animals from the son of Anubis. Anubis was a man. Horus was a man. Ra was not a man. Ra is a symbol for the sun. The Khufu Pyramid, according to Genesis 28, most of the chapter, Jacob, now called Israel, was northwest of the city of Lutz at the Light Place. Now, the Light Place is, is, has been defined as a place where a megalith, the standing stones of the megalith, was built to, to measure light. So the Light Place would be an insult to a degrading insult to the people who built the light place. As in, I'm, not, I'm going to identify it, but not really to identify it. I'm going to identify it with our name, not your name. And also, the, megalith, the word megalith itself is actually not their name for the place either. The word megalith is a Latin term, mega, large, lith, rock. So a megalith is a collection of large rocks. So the Khufu Pyramid can be properly identified as Jacob's Ladder. Yes, Jacob's Ladder the king of Israel. Why would Jacob, king of Israel, 
have built at least one pyramid on the west side of the Nile between Saqqara and Giza when Moses, an Isiu line descendant, ordered everyone to believe that Israel is in Levant lands. Moses wanted to become king or, or pharaoh of all the monotheists, and so therefore he erased Sumerian, he erased Akkadian, he erased Hittite, he erased formulation of Phoenician, even though the Phoenicians were Jacob line descendants and the Phoenicians were able to maintain a large enough army that Moses and his descendants could not bother them that much, although there was a, many, many, many battles between the Siu's line, Moses' descendants, and the Jacob descendants of the city of Tyre, the city of Phoenician, and the city of Biblos, which is an interesting concept because the word Biblos is the base word for the word Bible. The Khufu pyramid is interesting because not only has it been mislabeled by 50 different conquest cultures, and the evidence for the conquest cultures altering, changing, and changing the name of things is almost every single solitary time a conquest culture has conquered a culture, they change certain aspects of the culture they conquered to make themselves look, look better, look, be, appear more powerful, and to remove the previous culture's threats of power symbols. The Khufu pyramid would absolutely, and Khafre and Menkau pyramids, are huge symbols of power of the previous culture. So there's every reason for the erasure by the Hyksos first, and then the partial point putting back by the Jacob's line, king the pharaohs of Jacob's line, from 16 to, to King Tut, uh, 1335. And then the complete and total and thorough and absolute erasure of said evidence during from Seti's line down to the Romans, there, there's a absolute reason to remove all any and all evidence. In fact, not only is there hard, heavy-duty evidence of, of the erasure, it's not the only thing that was erased. The Ramses II, a 40-foot sculpture was from the belly button up was completely destroyed in not a subtle way. The face of the Sphinx and the back of the Sphinx were all completely recarved it um, during, Ram during Ramses' time. There was most likely wings on the back of the Sphinx, hence the reason why they're, they're recarving. The face, head, and, and back of the Sphinx most likely used to assemble, resemble a cherubim, a monotheistic symbol, hence the reason why you take a considerable amount of time and effort in removing the wings and reshaping the head from a cherubim into a Sphinx. Back to Genesis 28. Northwest of Lutz was the light place. And if you draw a, a line from the center of where Memphis used to be, northwest, you get, you draw, a, you draw a line straight through the middle of the Dozier Pyramid and straight through the Khufu Pyramid is key to all of those ancient cultures' mathematics. They did not operate on a single number line. They did not operate on um, A plus B equals C. They did not operate on a on an integers basis, you know, positive numbers and negative numbers. They did not operate that way because they had more than one number line. For evidence of this single number line not working, is we cannot build the Khufu Pyramid right here, right now. If you had a hundred trillion dollars in the bank, you could not rebuild the, the Khufu Pyramid to two specs. You do not have the mathematics for it. The single number line will not do it. They're not precise enough. They're not accurate enough. Why? Because a single number line is not is not designed to measure accurate. It's designed to give a statistical analysis of what something could be. It's designed to measure from fixed point to fixed point, but those fixed points are above a certain size. For us, above a certain dimensional size, that's what it's designed to measure to and from. Smaller than that size, it's all statistical analysis. Atomically smaller than that size, and it's a best guess. The Khufu Pyramid was built with a mathematics that makes the single number line look like it's kindergartner. I theorize that the Khufu Pyramid had a temple on the very top, which is the reason why the very top is, has several layers, in theory, removed after the, the, the white 
Lambda Limestone was removed uh, as the cover and entered AD when the when the side was breached by the Muslims. The cover was taken off and the internal ramp was taken off, even though the internal ramp that was between the limestone and the the current surface of the Khufu pyramid, that limestone covering and the ramp were Jacob's Ladder. That's where Jacob's Ladder was. It was northwest of the city of Lutz. The city of Lutz is the old name for the city of Memphis. Now the city of Memphis had a name change when Pharaoh Menes came through and built dikes around the city, since the city was quite literally built on a sand barge in the middle of the Nile River, and the Nile River being deep and wide would devastate the city every single solitary year. Well, why were the, why were the inhabitants of that specific area forced to stay in a city that flooded and sometimes flooded so badly that the entire city would be just about literally wiped off the map every year? Well, because they were forced to be there by Pharaoh. Who, how, and where, why were they forced to be there by Pharaoh? Well, that is a thing, thing you need to look at the Narmer monolith in Upper Egypt for, because it describes he, Narmer, comes in and conquers six cultures, each of the cultures being represented by, a, by an individual boat, divides the cultures that he conquered up into pieces parts, and assign each of the, each, each of the pieces parts to a specific area, to make sure that they, one, could produce grains, they could produce um, various food, textiles, mining, what have you, but they could not formulate together and, and do a collective power grab. They were strong enough to be able to, ma to make, make things for him, but they were not strong enough to, for, to tell him no. One of those areas that, that they were, that, that, that his enemies, according to the Narmer Plate and the Narmer Passport, were signed was the west side of the Nile between Saqqara and Giza, which in the middle of that area is where Memphis is. Old name for Memphis is the city of Lutz. The reason why it was called that is because it was called the Eternal City, named for the the Eternal Bone, which is the bone that connects the skull with the, with the spine. The Pharaoh's headdress is a map of Egypt, looking east, west behind, Lower Egypt, North, Upper Egypt, South, looking toward the toward the rising sun, with the west side with the west behind him, standing basically in the middle of the Nile because the 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 blue are the canals of Egypt. The face east of the Nile and the canal system, the canal system, and then the areas that were of little consequence to, to, to the farther west, behind the pharaoh. The, no, the city of Lutz was where it was where Memphis is, draw a line northeast of, of the city of Lutz, and you find the Giza Plateau. The Giza Plateau has three pyramids on it. The Khufu Pyramid, dedicated to Noah, Caffrey, dedicated to Adam, and Menkari dedicated to Abraham. Although the name itself is kind of strange because it's Menkari is Pharaoh Mem because Pharaoh Mem did not have the Kari put on. The Menkari, the Kari part, is the sacred place of Menkari Temple in Heliopolis from the Hyksos at the height of their power in 1800 BC when they owned all of Egypt. They, they dedicated their, that temple, they rededicated the temple from the Ben Ben Stone to Menkari. The obelisk in the center of that, in the, in the center of that temple is the, was, was, when Egypt was conquered by the Romans, that, that obelisk was taken down, shipped to Rome, and reassembled in St. Peter's Square in front of St. Peter's Basilica, which is where the, which is close to where the uh, Sistine Chapel is. The importance of all this stuff is, is that the Vatican itself let us know through its actions that the west side of the Nile between Saqqara and Giza was Israel 1, the first Israel, as in Israel 2 as being the current location of Israel. The problem is, is that Israel was never supposed to be in the Levant lands.